Hey guys. So today we're going to be talking about functional groups and introducing all of the functional groups that we'll be learning in this course. I will go ahead and tell you that this list that we're writing right now is not all of the functional groups in organic chemistry, but these are the ones we will be focusing on for this course. So if you look at other resources, they might have additional groups on there and that's completely fine, but you don't need to know them if they're not on this list. So let's look into what is a functional group. A functional group, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. A functional group is a characteristic part of an organic molecule that has specific properties or certain properties. This is important as it can help us to predict what properties or how a molecule will react uh, when you give it another molecule to interact with. This functional group may be one atom, such as like a halo alkane, we have a halogen and an alkane, or a group of atoms in a specific arrangement. So you could have, for example, a carbon, an oxygen, then a carbon. I'm just gonna underline this here. These are also used to classify families of organic compounds. So this is how organic chemists classify and define what molecules are. So let's look a little bit more into uh, something important for defining these functional groups, which to be honest, isn't even a group at all. But you know that in organic chemistry and what we've seen so far in our lectures is that we can have a lot of different molecules just based off of carbons and hydrogens. And we've seen that a lot. We've seen such, such as pentane, we have five carbons, 12 hydrogens, and we can reorganize that in a few different ways to make different molecules. However, in order to make a molecule reactive, it tends to have to have atoms that are of different electronegativities or electron counts, pi bonds, so pi bonds meaning double bonds or triple bonds. Those specific groups that you're adding on to make it more reactive, uh, more different, more polar, those groups are called your functional groups. So for an example, I'm not gonna tell you the names or anything yet, but for example, I could have on this molecule, I could add on a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and that carbon's also connected to an OH group. This portion here is called a functional group. It is the functional part of a molecule, the reactive part of the molecule. Something that is really important to define at this point also is what we call an R group. So in your textbook, as you're reading, you'll go through and you'll see that molecules have carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, nitrogen, sulfur. And then you'll see atoms that look like an, a letter R and you're like, huh, this is kind of weird. We don't have a uh, element that's just the little letter R. We have argon, but that's AR, not just R. What R stands for is it represents a collection of atoms, but not a specific one. So functional groups are specific collections, specific orientations of atoms. An R group tells you what there is on the rest of the molecule. just underline the R. R for rest. So for example, if I'm looking at this molecule I drew above, where we have the purple carbon-carbon chain, carbon-hydrogen chain, and then we have our red portion, which is the part that I've said is reactive. I specifically want, let's say I am redrawing this molecule, and I specifically want to focus on the portion of the molecule in the box. When I redraw this molecule, I could redraw it such as I put my functional group or the part that I'm specifically interested in at this moment or my priority for this discussion. And then off of that functional group, I'm going to put R 
In this case, R represents the rest of the carbon chain, so the rest of the molecule that I am not showing. So the R group can represent a specific rest of the molecule if you're defining it. So if within a problem R is defined, then you know exactly what it is and you're just using R to represent the rest of that molecule that you're, you've defined. But especially when we're learning functional groups, you'll typically see R groups in the general definition of that group to show that it can come off of any type of molecule. So in this case, if we're talking about just general purposes, R represents just anything else that you could add on. So I'm showing you just the important part. Okay, so let's do our first couple uh, functional groups real quick. We're going to start off with the functional groups that have no heteroatoms. So heteroatoms, over here I have a little definition. Heteroatoms are anything that's not carbon and hydrogen. So no heteroatoms would mean only, oh, that's not a Y, only carbon and hydrogen bond or atoms in these functional groups. So our first one is we're going to have an alkene. Notice that instead of, this is almost the same as an alkane, what we've talked about uh, thus far, but now we have an E here in the middle. So that's important. Alkene uh, is, the E is the only difference. This contains a carbon-carbon double bond. So the general scheme for this is we're going to have a double bond. And then for each of the carbons, they'll have two things off of them. I'm going to write R as these other things because we can just have the rest of the molecule. In this case, R can equal carbon or hydrogen. You'll notice as we go along with different functional groups, what R, whether R can be a hydrogen or not changes. So I'm going to define it for you at, under each one. Okay, so let's do an example of, of a uh, alkene. So we could have something like this, for example. That is an alkene. It has three of those R groups off of it. I'll go ahead and draw them out for you. R hydrogens. And then one of them is a carbon-based chain. Let's make those red, those bonds red so that we all match. There we go. Or let's say we wanted, we're, we had something with higher substitution or more things on it. We could also have an alkene that has maybe three things off of it and then one hydrogen. So maybe it's like this. So those are both alkenes or examples of alkenes. One other kind of alkene that you can see is a cyclic alkene, maybe such as this. That is also an alkene, but now it's just in a ring. Okay, next we have alkyne. So again, it's important. The only thing that's different is the Y here, alkyne. It contains a carbon-carbon triple bond. The carbon-carbon triple bond, so uh, C, triple bond C, we're going to have the general scheme, C, triple bond C, and then an R group on either side. So we only have one R group on either side this time because each carbon in this case already has a uh, has three bonds, so we only need one more. I'm also going to draw this without writing in those carbons because you'll see it both ways. So you could see it either way. I like to draw in these carbons here, specifically on alkynes. It's not necessary, but I like to use to remind myself where those carbons are. And again, in this one, R can equal carbon or hydrogen. So we could have a, I'm just gonna draw two general ones real quick. We could have, for example, 
a hydrogen on one side and then a carbon chain on the other, or we could have a carbon chain on both sides. Let's do something fun on that side. We could have either of those. So it's important when you're numbering alkynes to be really careful that we don't skip any of these carbons. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Notice there's one here and one there on our carbon chains. These get a little tricky. We'll talk more specifically about these when we get to them in the next few sections in the book. Okay, and then aromatic compounds. These are compounds that contain a benzene ring. So you'll hear benzene a lot in uh, talking about organic chemistry and it's because we, we draw it in a lot of molecules. A benzene ring is a six membered ring where we have three double bonds inside that six membered ring. This can have a variety a variety of R groups around it. So at any of these carbons, we can have an R group. And in this case, R could be anything. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, whatever you want. So let's draw an example of a benzene ring. So we could have an aromatic compound that's literally just benzene, so all hydrogens off of it. Or we could have one, I'll draw one that I used uh, yesterday, just for an example. We could have one that has three substituents off of it. I'm going to write CH3 just to show you that that R group is a methyl group but you don't necessarily have to write that. I was just going to write it for clarity. So you could have any number of things substituted. It could also be a nitrogen. Let's draw that one out. Oh my goodness, there we go. So these are all aromatic compounds. So if you see this benzene ring, you automatically know it's an aromatic compound. Let's zoom out a little bit. So this is where we're going to stop this particular video in terms of our introduction to functional groups. And we'll pick it back up in the next video with some heteroatoms. See you guys there.